Hello everyone, this is Melv here. Um, I would like to do a little follow-up videos to my Warhammer Quest homebrews discussion video. Uh, there are a few of you uh, who asked me uh, how I create these uh, tokens for Curse City, uh, both for the heroes and for the uh, hostiles and the um, mysterious objects uh, and I would like to just discuss how I uh, how I do it so um, first of all you will need the components so these are coin capsules plastic coin capsules um, these are 27 millimeters wide and um, they basically open like this so if you open it like this you can put either your coin or your token into the capsule and it basically closes like this. Um, you can get these from I think all um, famous kind of online retailers. Pick your favorite one, the cheapest ones. Uh, they all produce from the same place to be honest. So I would say find the cheapest deal you can get. Uh, and the second thing is, these normally comes with the box because if you buy uh, in batches, they come cheaper. Normally, they come in boxes of hundreds. So in this box, there are uh, a hundred of these tokens. You can see five columns, each columns with twenty tokens, so hundred in total. Um, and they're very handy because you can basically store them. Um, you can see the size comparison, you know, this is smaller than one of these tiles. So you can buy them in batches and store a lot of tokens in them. Um, if you want, you can also buy some of these coin stands. Uh, and again, they are really cheap online. So you can just put them on it and make it look like they are a standee rather than just a token. So uh, the way I create these um, these tokens, um, there are there are a few ways um, that you can do it. Uh, I originally get this inspiration from uh, Prasia, who created a lot of tokens for the original 1995 Warhammer Quest. Um, he's done a really good job in creating the these tokens for the whole bestiary in the role, role play book. So for those of you who have played it, you know there are loads and loads and loads of, um, uh, of monsters that you can fight. And he has created them. He's also put in a, a background color, which indicates the level of these monsters when you will face them. And uh, this is really good job. I use this for my Warhammer Quest 995 as well. Um, I might do another video on, on those. Uh, but basically I use this template. Uh, these are one inches um, circles. If you print them on 100% scale on A4. So most people should be able to print them pretty easily um, at home. Uh, and I have then just created similar things for Curse City. And you can see uh, I have the PDF for all the monsters and heroes and also the mysterious object. And there's uh, additional characters which I don't have the card for because I didn't have the book. Um, and you just need to print this out and crop them out. Now, I have also done similar things for Blackstone Fortress, uh, Silver Tower, and also uh, Shadow over Hemhall. So, uh, most of the tiles are bigger than the 27 millimeters, so you can always put them on it, on a square, um, just to show you on silver tower for example they look like this if you put it on the 
map tiles. Um, and the way I make these tokens is I just find stock photos of them. Or there is also another way, which if you have the Roblox and if you don't care about um, tearing it apart, then you can actually uh, use it to create your tokens. Uh, so for example, this is the Cursed City Roblox over here. You can see there is a um, model guide, Heroes Model Guide. Uh, you will also see hostile model guides as well. Uh, there's a photo of all the different adversaries. And if you compare the coin capsules, you will find it to be, you know, if you're able to crop this photo out, then it will basically pretty much match on these 27 millimeters coin capsules. Um, obviously in that case, you need to destroy your rule books, at least these few pages. Uh, and there's also an issue with these adversaries because they are on the other side. So you might need to do some photocopying, which is probably a better idea if you photocopy them and then crop them out. Uh, or you can just do what I did, you know, put it in, uh, in, uh, in those templates um, and crop them out. And just to give you an example as well, the way I crop them out, I bought one of these punches. Um, there are multiples online. Uh, I think uh, this one is from Frescas. Uh, this is the one that I like better uh, because these ones, you basically use it like a normal puncher like this. Uh, the problem with this is it's not really, uh, it, it doesn't really normally give me a very clean cut. Um, and it doesn't work very well with thin uh, papers. Uh, these ones are better because I have a bit more control on these ones and you know I can look into where exactly I want to cut. Just to give you an example like this. So these are from the Warm Quest original uh, tokens created by Saya. Uh, I've printed this on just normal A4 papers uh, I would recommend you to print on, you know, higher quality, probably photo, um, photo papers, uh, where it will basically catch the colors a bit better. And also it will be, you know, firmer than these ones. But the way I do it is just, you know, print it out and find the tokens that you want like this and squeeze it. Oops. Up. There you go. This is the uh, the token for the skeleton, and then you need to just pop open your coin capsule, put it in, close it, and there you go. A uh, skeleton token. So. Um, it is really helpful to me because I don't do minis, I don't paint, I'm bad at you know anything mini related. Um, I break them always, and um, and also I don't have that many space and money to keep a lot of minis in my place. And uh, as you can see, I can keep all sixty uh, tokens for Cursity in one box. There are two more rows over here that I can, you know, use for expansions if there are any coming out or fan-made um, adversary cards. So it makes it really portable. I can bring my game anywhere I want. You know, just this box, probably some tiles, rule box, and another box for the, uh, for the other um, markers and so forth. And um, if you really want to save on space as well, you can do a double-sided ones. So like this one, you know, you can have two different tokens on each side. And that's what I did for the original Warhammer Quest because there are many couple hundreds of monsters and uh, I tried to squeeze them into five 
boxes like these ones and I have to do double sided and that works because um, they come in different levels so you don't normally encounter the same high level mo uh, monsters when you're low level and vice versa. Um, for those of you who want to create your own using photos, Photoshop or whatever it is, um, there's one tip um, I would say uh, for at least for these Warhammer quests, the older ones, the, the earlier interactions like Silver Towers, Hammer Horse, uh, the monsters' weapons um, do matter. So uh, many people want to use proxies. So, uh, but in that case, for example, these um, I can't remember the name. This goblin spider thing. Um, you can see one of it has a bow and the one other one has a spear. So they will act differently. So this one obviously will have a uh, uh, range attack and the other one doesn't. And the same for these acolytes, um, the ones with shields, they will have um, additional defense and, or, or, or wounds, uh, but these ones uh, will not. So. If you are using proxies or you're creating tokens like these ones, you might want to be aware, uh, check the original uh, description of the game and you know make sure you, you created the correct models. Um, and for these ones, Silver Towers is slightly more difficult to find because some of these models are, are unique ones um, and there's not a lot of stock photos around for them. Uh, but for hammer holes, uh, you can still find loads of them. I think they're still, even the models are still available, majority of them. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, just a little follow up on how I created these tokens. I hope this is useful um, to any one of you interested. And I will talk to you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.